everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will start uh, a new topic that is called ADME, A stands for absorption, D stands for uh, distribution, M stands for uh, metabolism, E stands for excretion that means absorption into the plasma, distribution inside the plasma and tissues, M is the metabolism that is taking place in the liver and because of the presence of different enzymes, E is the excretion that is uh, throwing out from the body either through uh, the various uh, urine or uh, through the uh, inhalation and exhalation, okay. So, I did show this uh, in the previous class. So, we have the compound structure which we can play around with molecular weight, hydrogen bond donor acceptor, uh, the lipophilicity or uh, uh, the hydrophilicity, the polar surface area, the PKA shape and uh, which affects the reactivity. Now, three things are connected with each other. The physico chemical properties that means solubility, permeability, chemical stability okay and um, the pharmacokinetics and toxicity that means uh, the clearance from the uh, system, the half life, the bioavailability, the lethal dose that is with respect to the living system. And here with respect to the, um, the proteins, the metabolism, the transporter affinity, binding to protein, target affinity. So, all these are interrelated, okay. So, we can change a few parameters or structural features or descriptors, um, but uh, in the physical level they get modified, in the biochemical level they get modified and in the living system also they get modified, okay. There are a lot of uh, free softwares. Um, one is called Mall Inspiration, then uh, the CRDD web pro portal that is computer resource related to drug discovery, Osiris Property Explorer, Explorer Swiss ADME, all these uh, softwares um, can uh, try to predict many of these uh, properties like solubility, metabolism and the various ADME properties, stability uh, and so on. For example, if you take this uh, first one, the Mall Inspiration. That is quite a uh, interesting software. So, this is called the Mall Inspiration software, okay. So, uh, we can go into free online services. We can draw structures here. Uh, we can draw any structures or if I have the smile notation, I can download. For example, uh, if I have um, uh, metformin, I can download or I can draw a structure. Here, I will show you metformin. Uh, if we search, Okay, so this is metformin. Yeah, uh, we can copy the smiles notation. Okay, and then uh, take it to the Mullins, and then we can enter the smiles notation. Okay, so metformin is taken here. And it gives you a lot of properties. Log P, um, this is based on some um, software, total polar surface area, number of atoms, molecular weight, uh, okay, number of uh, nitrogens, OH, NH. And does it violate uh, certain rules, rotatable bonds? So, it has got three rotatable bonds as you can see here 1, 2, 3, volume of this molecule, okay. So, this is the molecule, it is copied from the smiles. Uh, I can predict the bioactivity of this molecule, okay. So, does it bind to a uh, G protein uh, receptor, uh, ion channel modulator, does it uh, kinase inhibition activity, uh, nuclear receptor ligand, protease inhibition, enzyme inhibition. So, um, it can do all those things. and. Uh, Then uh, we can even draw three dimensional structure of this molecule as you can see. Uh, we can view it and uh, we can uh, get the polar surface area. Polar surface area leads to nitrogen, right? Um, so, the, all the nitrogens will appear uh, polar as you can see here, okay. Uh, electros this is the electrostatic potential on this, okay. Um, then we can put it in a dotted form, so it gives you a dotted form or it could be in a tube form. So, you can look at the molecule in the tube form, it can be wire form, this is the standard, 
Okay. So, we can do all those things or um, so from the zinc we can copy, we can get properties or we can uh, draw molecule of our interest. Uh, as a medicinal chemist, I feel that I would like to synthesize a molecule like this okay. and um, I want to know the properties of this molecule. Okay. So, I put in some chlorine here. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So, I want to put another here, and then I put a chlorine just blindly, I am putting something. So, we can calculate properties of this molecule. So, it gives you log P 2.89. So, it is uh, the it is neither hydrophobic, too much hydrophobic, or too much hydrophilic, which is good. Total polar surface area is low because it is predominantly a lot of CH2s, carbons, that is why uh, polarity is very low. Um, okay, solubility may be a problem, number of atoms, molecular weight, um, it is giving all these details. Okay. We can look at uh, the, the bioactivity of this molecule, so it gives you all this bioactivity. Uh, we can draw the three dimensional structure of this and look at how it looks like, okay. the molecule uh, and then we can look at polar surface area. As you can see only very little uh, polar surface area. Okay, because of the presence of oxygen. So, predominantly it is a highly hydrophobic uh, system. Um, okay, so, this is a very interesting uh, mole inspiration as it is called, we can do that. Uh, another software like I mentioned uh, CRDD web portal, uh, we can look at uh, that also that is called a computational resource for drug discovery. There are a lot of uh, um, softwares which can do the uh, predictions okay, as you can see here will not go too much into this. The third one which um, is the Osiris property explorer and again um, uh, this is Osiris pro sorry this is Osiris property uh, will not go into that also. Okay, if you want to look at that uh, front page this is called the Osiris property explorer. Yeah, this is Osiris property explorer. As you can see, again uh, we can look at um, proper many properties tools, molecular property tools. As you can see here, we can get uh, the property tool. Uh, we can try to get molecular rate, fragment rate, drug design, um, prediction, solubilities. All those things can be done. Uh, of course, the uh, Swiss ADME is also there. Uh, we can use the Swiss ADME. Um, and then try to get property. For example, metformin, we went to metformin, right? So, we can get the metformin, go to Swiss ADME, enter the SMILES notation here, here and then we can run. So, Swiss ADME gives lot of information as you can see. It is still working and uh, it gives you molecular weight, number of atoms, it gives you log in different different techniques, different types of uh, softwares, um, measures log p in different ways. So, it gives you an average or consensus log p in the bottom. It gives you total polar surface area, molecular refractivity, hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, molecular weight, and GI absorption, then blood brain barrier, then PGB that is P glycoprotein. Does it act as a substrate for that? No. It gives you solubility data here. Um, this drug, some of these rules we will talk about later, and this also pains we will talk about later. Okay, so it gives you a lot of um, properties. Cytochrome pre does it go and inhibit that, um, and so on actually. Okay, and then bioavailability also must be there somewhere. Ah, bioavailability 0.55. Um, that means that's good. Very uh, good. Of course, metformin is a drug. So okay, so. And this is also an in interesting graph which uh, puts in the lipophilicity, size, flexibility and number of unsaturated and, and then insaturated that because of and then it draws the molecule and uh, or if it falls within this pink that means uh, it satisfies all condition. If one of the properties falls outside, so you may have uh, a, 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 a structure which looks different. So, ADME is also the Swiss ADME is also a good software 
for predicting lot of properties, mole inspiration. Uh, so, all these softwares are good for uh, calculating uh, properties um, as we go along we will see more of that. Okay. Okay. Um, so, what is this absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion? So, we are going to spend a lot of time um, on them. Okay. This is important for all drugs, um, it frequent causes of failure of treatment, frequent because uh, you are not getting effective level. If um, I am having a bacterial infection, my concentration of the drug at the infected site should be higher than the minimum inhibitory concentration of that bacteria, so that the bacteria gets killed. Okay, so that is called the effective level uh, or it may produce toxicity, sometimes uh, uh, the drug may be too much, concentration may be too much, it may be producing toxicity. Drug, drug interaction, if you have drug, two drugs, three drugs given to the same patient. For example, for blood pressure they may give you a beta blocker and they may give you a ACE inhibitor uh, and they may also give aspirin for blood thinning. So, you have three drugs, there could be uh, interactions between uh, these drugs. If we want to understand different dosage forms, um, sometimes the drug is given orally, sometimes intravenous, intraperitoneal, intramuscular, intravaginal, it could be through the skin, it could be nasal. Um, so, we need to understand how the drug gets uh, into the plasma through different routes, what happens to the maximum concentration uh, and so on actually. Okay. So, uh, we need to understand ADME which is very important and uh, most as you can see 39 percent of the drug failure during clinical trials because of pure poor ADME. We realize that when we do animal trials and when we do human voluntary trial, lack of efficacy the concentration at the target site is not sufficient. Um, if there is a tumor, the concentration of uh, the um, cancer drug should be high enough to kill the tumorous cells. Okay. Toxicity, 21 percent of the drug fails because of toxicity. So, you see uh, we need to address that which is based on as I have been telling uh, the bioavailability, uh, how it gets absorbed in the GI, the solubility, the lipophilicity distribution inside the bloodstream, whether it gets metabolized um, because of the presence of different types of enzyme, does it get metabolized because of uh, uh, different pH conditions, does it get excreted, even that is very important. Okay. So, we will look at each one of them. Uh, so, um, this is how the drug travels. So, imagine I, I am given a drug orally, okay, a tablet form. Okay. So, the drug is given as a tablet form. Uh, so, it goes into the GI tract, it goes through the stomach, pH is 1 to 2, then it goes to the small intestine, finally to large intestine that is colon. Okay. So, the pH keeps increasing coming to basic. So, drug solubility becomes a problem, drug, uh, drug um, uh, dissociation happens and uh, drug gets absorbed. Okay, so, if it does not get absorbed, drugs get excreted, okay. so some portion is lost. So, it gets absorbed, it comes uh, into the blood stream and then uh, liver is a fantastic gatekeeper, so it starts degrading the drug. So, if it gets degraded um, and some drug gets absorbed in the tissues, okay, some gets drug gets degraded, metabolism, excretion, kidney, lungs, so you lose. Some gets some drug gets attached to the tissues absorbed, so you lose. So only small amount of drug goes into the bloodstream and goes reaches the target site, and again uh, uh, only part of the drug will go to the active site. Part of the drug will go and bind to uh, other um, proteins, so that also becomes useless. So only a small amount reaches the target site. So I may be given uh, a large um, concentration of the drug, but what reaches at the target site may be very less and this ratio is called the bioavailability. So, maybe 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, um, higher the percentage um, better because I can give a small quantity of the drug, so toxicity is low, um, I do not have to frequently give the patient the drug. Uh, so, bioavailability, bioavailability larger the value better it is. And um, as, I, as we saw in Swiss ADME software, 
you approximately get a feel of the bioavailability. Met for men it gave a number of 55 percent. Okay. So, if you go to the uh, um, uh, database like uh, drugs.com, uh, okay, it may act give the actual value because um, metformin is a real drug. Okay. Uh, so, this is called the bioavailability. Uh, this determines the drug dosage, this determines even toxicity because if the bioavailability is poor, the patient has to be given large quantities of the drug. So, that it could be toxic. Um, if the bioavailability is very good, patient has to be given smaller quantity. If too much drugs uh, gets excreted, then that means if the half life is very short, so the patient has to be given frequently the drug, that means the dosing times increases. So, everything is determined by this uh, particular uh, uh, picture. Okay. This picture gives you nicely what is happening in dif at different uh, places as the drug travels right from the oral okay, cavity in the mouth right up to the target side. Okay. Now, another thing that happens is uh, the drug when it comes to the oral mucous cavity pH is 6.85, but as soon as it reaches the stomach the pH as I said is very low 1, 2, 3. So, that means um, there could be a drug degradation because of acidic pH. For example, ester bonds can break because of acidic pH, amide bonds can break because of acidic pH. So, we need to watch out. Then when you come to duodenum, uh, ileum and so on, the pH goes up and up, so it goes to 5.8, okay, 5 to 8 sorry. When the drug goes to the plasma region, the uh, pH is 7.4, okay. So, the drug stability, solubility, everything um, should be constant irrespective of the changes in the pH. Then it goes to the liver where there is a lot of degradation, then it goes to heart, then uh, a circulation system, lungs, arterial system and so on. Uh, okay. Then it goes to the target cell membrane, then it has to get uh, into the target site and becomes efficacy. So, there is a distribution of the drug. Uh, it is like a big pot of water where you put small amount of salt, the, uh, the salt gets totally distributed, concentration becomes low. If the uh, amount of water in the pot is very large, concentration becomes very small. If the amount of water in the pot is very small, concentration is high. So, it is not uh, the volume depends not only on uh, whether it is uh, male or female but also on the type of drug because some drugs uh, will remain only in the bloodstream, some drugs will also get absorbed in the tissues, so the concentration in the bloodstream becomes low. Um, so, uh, it depends on the type of drugs, okay. a very small molecule um, can easily get absorbed in the tissues, so the amount present in the uh, bloodstream may be low. Whereas whereas a large molecule and uh, uh, hydrophilic may not get absorbed, so the concentration in the bloodstream may be very high. Uh, so, um, for the same person depending upon the drug, the volume and of distribution as we call it can change. Okay. So, it is not constant. So, it can depend on the race, it can depend on the gender, it can depend on the type of drug, uh, it can even depend on the food we eat. Uh, and uh, the health of the patient and so on actually. Okay, so, as I mentioned the drug comes in and travels, it gets absorbed into the liver, uh, whatever is not absorbed goes as excretion from kidney also there is excretion, from the liver it goes to plasma, it gets absorbed in tissues and finally reaches target site. So, this concentration uh, that uh, was this, this okay, the ratio multiplied by hand. This is called oral bioavailability and it is mentioned as F, okay, that is the oral bioavailability. This is a very important parameter to understand. Okay, so, um, uh, when we talk about absorption, there are many routes for administration of the drug. Right? Um, so, it can be oral, sublingual, rectal, so it can be soluble form, okay. uh, it could be enteric coated, so the coating goes away uh, because it is keeps the drug um, stable without degradation or it could be a slow release formulation. So, the, uh, there are now 
slow release uh, partially crystallized metformins are there. So, it could be a slow release formation, formulation. So, the drug gets released over a period of time, okay. Uh, parenteral, it could be intravenous, it could be intramuscular, it could be subcutaneous, intradermal. So, different rates of absorption you are going to have, different plasma peaks. So, if I introduce the drug orally after about uh, 1 hour, 2 hours slowly the drug reaches a max uh, and then it starts falling down. Whereas, if I give it intravenously immediately you find a big increase in the concentration in the bloodstream. Okay? Depending upon the route, uh, the time at which the max happens changes and the amount or concentration also will change. Okay? Skin, sometimes skin patches, nicotine patches you have heard of. right? So, all these matters, lungs through inhalation like some bronchial drugs, local or systemic effect like uh, even some anesthesia okay, through lungs, vaginal that again it becomes local, okay. treatment of a certain uh, uh, bacterial infection or fungal infection. Uh, so, what is this subcutaneous means that is in the fat layer underneath the skin okay. and um, intramuscular means into the muscle. Uh, intradermal means into the dermis of the screen layer underneath the epidermis. Okay. So, epidermis is upper skin layer. So, subcutaneous is into the fat layer whereas, intradermal just below intramuscular into the muscle region. So, you can have different types of uh, um, parenteral roots. Of course, of course, uh, um, eye as you have heard of eye drops. Um, they are again local. Okay. So, some of them are local, some of them could be systemic. Okay. Most drugs enter the body by mouth or injection, they must cross barriers to entry that is skin, gut wall, alveolar membrane, then they get distributed by the, by the blood to the side of action, intra or extracellular they have to cross the barriers. So, it may have to go through capillaries, cell wall. Um, they get biotransformed to several different compounds because there are a lot of enzymes in the liver. Uh, liver is a very fantastic gatekeeper, it starts degrading whatever uh, uh, compound is present. So, you have esterases, you have hydrolases, you have oxidoreductases, you have uh, lipases. So, all these start degrading your uh, material, um, your compound, and may, they may become either sometimes toxic or they may become totally useless in active form or excreted. So, it can be excreted through kidney, different routes which removes them and or their metabolites from the body. So, you not only the drug, even the metabolites may be getting removed. So, pharmacokinetics is quantification of the whole thing. So, what the body does to the drug is called pharmacokinetics okay? and um, what uh, the drug does to the body is called pharmacodynamics. Okay, so, one is called pharmacokinetics and one is called pharmacodynamics. Okay. Let us look at each one of them little bit. Absorption, some drugs work outside the body like your creams, laxatives, okay. but even some antibacterial uh, fungal at the surface, some enter the body, enteral, oral, sublingual and so on, uh, parenteral, okay, subcutaneous. Uh, intramuscular, intra, uh, intra and cross, they have to cross the lipid barriers and cell walls, gut walls, capillary walls, blood brain barrier. Okay. So, a lot of diffusion limitations happen and then they get into the body after distribution to reach the target. Okay. So, what are the factors that are affect oral absorption? Um, drug has to disintegrate, that means the tablet, if it is in a tablet form, it should break down, it should completely dissolve, that is dissolution. Um, drug has to be stable in that pH in the GI system, uh, stability of drug to enzymes, there are so many enzymes which I mentioned about, motility and mixing in GI tract, they are mobile and they get mixed with the GI fluid, they may be getting mixed with food and so on. Okay. Presence and types of food, what type of food we have eaten, sometimes proteinous material can um, just absorb or adsorb uh, drug and uh, drug uh, uh, active ingredients. Okay. 
the drug may get diluted because of presence of uh, fluids inside the GI. Passage across GI tract wall that means uh, through the um, passive diffusion. So, that means uh, the, the permeability has to be reasonably good which we talked about in the previous classes. Okay. Then blood flow to GI tract. So, it depends on there is good blood flow in the GI tract gastric emptying time because um, again I showed you in the previous class um, the emptying time varies. For example, in the stomach it could be about uh, only 3 hours max whereas uh, in the small intestine it may go to several several hours um, and then large intestine it could go into several days. So, the emptying time matters. Formulation, how we have formulated the drug, the manufacturer has formulated, he might have added surfactant, stabilizers, solubilizers. So, how it has been formulated? So, all these matters. So, typically um, you can look at uh, if the drug is given as an IV, the concentration of the, this uh, drug will increase with time and then fall down. This y axis is concentration, x axis could be time. If it is given orally, you will not reach that peak concentration and also the peak will happen much later because uh, the drug has to solubilize in the stomach, get um, past the permeable barrier, um, lipid barrier and reach. So, it will the max time will change and um, the constant the level high, height also will change. Okay. So, the bioavailability is area under this curve AUC oral, area under this curve IV. Okay. So, obviously, AUC oral will always be less. I mean compared to AUC IV. So, it will always be less than um, 1. So, we can multiply by 100 and uh, that gives you the F value or the bioavailability value. So, that is how uh, you can find out if I have a rat um, and, a, and a drug, I give it through IV, I get uh, this particular graph, then I, um, I mix it with this food and allow the rat to consume it orally and I will get and monitor the concentration of the drug as a function of time by taking blood samples and then I will get this graph, I take this ratio to understand the bioavailability of the drug. Okay. Uh, so, bioavailability uh, absorption determined, the proportion of the drug in a dosage form available to the body. Generally IV injections we assume it gives 100 percent bioavailability. So, it is the ratio of the area under the curve. Okay concentration through other route. But it is not an indication of the drug effectiveness, it is only availability. Please remember it is not uh, about uh, the effective, whether the drug is effective that is um, whether it kills bacteria or whether it kills cancerous cells that you might have collected data in your in vitro studies. Okay. So, um, the bio equivalence can change okay, bio availability or bio equivalence. For example, this is a very interesting data. Um, this is um, a compound called digoxin okay, and um, different manufacturers make this. Imagine uh, 8 different manufacturers make it um, and you give 0.25 milligram of that particular drug, um, but the plasma digoxin concentration could be very different. Okay, so much different as you can see here the mg per ml, this manufacturer you may have 3 whereas this manufacturer it could be 0.4, so almost 10 time difference. Okay, so, um, the availability of this particular drug depending upon the manufacturer has changed so much. Why is it? Because of the way they manufacture, the way they make the tablet, the way this other components have been added, so it can change dramatically. Okay. So, sustained release uh, preparations okay, like uh, with oil, drugs are mixed with oil or made into viscous material or made into particles um, so that it slowly um, uh, degrades particles and releases the drug or viscous material. So, the drug slowly comes out of this viscous oily material or multi layer tablets, we can have a, a coating of uh, uh, different uh, biodegradable polymers. Okay, like a gelatin, chitin and so on. So, they degrade slowly, drug gets released slowly, multi-layer tablets. It can help in slow release, it can reduce the toxicity, it can also help in the drug stability. Okay? Yeah. 
sustained release capsules. So, we can have it in res resins, uh, it slowly releases over a very long time. Infusers, okay. So, we can have uh, infused, the drug gets infused, sometimes we can have a sensor, it can check the glucose level and release uh, uh, the uh, anti-diabetic drug, okay. That is called infusers, okay. So, the it is kept um, inside the body and the drug gets released from time to time or based on certain uh, um, conditions. Skin patches, you must have heard about nicotine patch. So, the drug um, which is in the patch slowly gets uh, into the uh, body, okay. Pro drugs, I explained um, it is a drug uh, and another molecule connected through a bond the other molecule helps the drug to maybe cross the membrane, maybe improve the stability, but inside the body the presence of enzymes may degrade um, and the drug gets released and then it is in active form, okay. So, the pro drug is not active, but once the drug gets released inside the body uh, because of uh, some enzyme action, then the drug becomes active, okay. Liposomes, drugs could be encapsulated in liposomes, okay. They are highly hydrophilic systems. Targeted drug delivery, we can target to a particular site uh, using certain uh, cues based on pH or temperature or presence of um, some other uh, uh, enzyme, uh, antibody directed. So, as you know antibody antigen type of uh, uh, combinations, so the drug ha will go and bind to only one particular um, okay, antigen not to any other antigen. So, a uh, lot of uh, different approaches by which uh, drug could be uh, targeted okay, and also the release profile could be extended over a long period of time. Okay. So, uh, we will continue again in the next class uh, on this topic of uh, ADME. Thank you very much for your time.